Welcome to my channel, Unbiased LLC. In today's video, I am going to be making a patch and I am going to be using the bare minimum um, materials. So my first thing, I just want to let you guys know that I appreciate you for watching this video. If you have never seen any one of my videos before, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting on any video that you may like that I have available at this moment. So I will go ahead on and tell you the um, materials that I'm going to use for this patch. I am using this purse-like bag that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. It has two sides and it's open right here. And then it also has like a long strap. I'm going to cut all of this stuff off and just use the amount of material that I need for this patch, which is a five by three. I am also going to use my map pencil to mark out my five by three. I need a pair of scissors. I'm going to be using my rotary cutter just to make sure that my lines are crisp and clean. I also have a tape measure. I also brought out the ruler just in case. So if you don't have a tape measure, you can use a ruler. You can use a sheet of paper just to get your lines straight. I am going to be using some cutaway stabilizer. And I'm also going to be using my 5 by, I mean, I'm sorry, 6.25 by 8.25 Mighty Hoop for this project. So let's get started. So first I'm going to figure out how to get the most of the material like I want to be able to use what I'm gonna use today but then save the rest for a later project so I am going to cut down because I want to try to keep the straps just in case I use them for something else and I'm going to just cut and then I'm trying to get to this seam right here, if you can see that. And I'm going to slice this down the seam because I only need to have one open side. So I need that open side to lay flat. So that's what I'm trying to achieve at this moment. Okay. And the inside of this bag already have some type of a, like a felt backing. So that's going to help with the structure of this patch to keep it stable and also look very clean when the person applies it to whichever garment they, they, they choose to. I'm sorry, dropping stuff. So I'm going to just try to open up the bottom of this seam. And this is in a color like beige. So just for anybody who's asking, just in case my camera is not clear. And I'm just going to try to take out these curves at the bottom. And then see. I was trying to keep this bottom, but I guess I'm going to have to split this in half as well. Which is okay. I mean, I'll use this material some type of way. And I want to say, let me see if it tells us what this material is made of. They say it's like a phone tablet bag crossbody. It is... It doesn't say what type of material it is, but it feels like, like a faux leather, like fake leather. Okay, so let me take the tag off. And this is an experiment, but I looked online for faux leather material, and it's expensive. So I was like, wait a minute. Dollar Tree sells faux leather purses, and... Let me just go get it and try it. So that's what we're going to do here today. Okay. So I pretty much got this part flat, which is good. And so I'm going to just turn it over like this. 
and then my measurement like I said is a five by three and I'm going to do the patch somewhat like an applique on my embroidery machine so all I need to do and this is split right here so I can't use this part so I'm going to kind of go over and once I get my measurements, I will square this off. I will square these ugly edges off. So I'm just gonna start from where this split is because I can't use it anyway. And do measure to my five. Put a mark there underneath. And then I'm also gonna put a mark at the top of this side and the bottom of this side, right? And then my height is going to be three inches. So I'm squaring off this bottom. So I will actually have my three inches up here. And once I get this done, I will take my regular ruler And draw my lines and connect the dots so and I kind of did let's say um, about 0.2 millimeters of a edge that way when I get ready to this one didn't kind of line up but I think I got the the right measurements at the top versus in the middle um when i have a 0.2 millimeter edge so that my stitches can cover the fabric so what that mean i kind of push those in just 0.2 of a centimeter of a millimeter i'm sorry and but you want it to be big enough so that the edge run of your patch can actually stitch into your material so i'm gonna just measure this again just to make sure it's a five by three and then we'll cut it out with the um yes yeah, so i have five here and i have a three here so we should be good to go i'll cut it out with my rotary cutter hopefully you guys can see my lines So here we go and hold on because I'm not on my cutting mat so let me let me get that I don't want to mess up my table so again you will probably need a cutting mat <laughs> I didn't mention that in the beginning and I'm sorry sometimes you try to think ahead on these videos but we mess up it's okay if you have it available go and get it okay so and I'm gonna just cut this bottom off with the scissors once I square once I get my five by three off of the uh, the material and there we go and i'm going to use my scissors just to clean this edge up and i only did that because i didn't clean my edge up when before i started cutting so like i said sometimes we mess up and i'm telling y'all i can't cut straight to save my life I'm using a ruler and a, a um, rotary cutter, and this still didn't look like it's clean to me. But this is what we have. And so now, I'm going to put all of this to the side. Let's get this out the way. So now I'm done with my bag. But look at all this material that I have left. 
to practice with, use, even the straps. All of this is still usable. So now I'm just gonna hoop my project. And like I said, this is my 6.25 by 8.25 Mighty Hoop. Uh -oh. And it's sticking because um, this is my, um, what is this called? The file cabinet. So it's sticking to my file cabinet. So basically, I'm just placing this on here. So here we are back at, we are at the machine now. I have my six by 2.5 by 8.2.5 Mighty Hoop already set up. This is some cutaway stabilizer that I have underneath here. And what I'm gonna do now is just place it on my machine. Oh, I gotta move my um, thing on the side. I'm gonna place it on my machine so that I can do my placement stitch. So we know exactly where to put our faux leather on this project. Um, and that's the beauty of doing patches because the machine kind of tells you where to place the fabric. And you can't go wrong, basically. Unless you're like me and cut the fabric too short or too small. Oh, I forgot I had this hoop on here. Yeah, sorry. And I'm just gonna place this back and tie my screws down so that my hoop won't fall off while we're while I'm working. Now we'll put the mighty hoop on. And we will watch this stitch out, which is the placement stitch. And the border of this design is green. So you should be able to see it. And all I'm gonna do is do, um, trace my design right here, just to make sure that is centered and I have enough room to get this project done. Okay, so we're gonna embroider or start. And right here, I'm just gonna pick my colors. If you've ever watched any of my videos before, you know exactly what this is. Um, I'm just choosing the colors. The reason I don't wanna show you the screen is because I don't wanna show you <laughs> The project like the whole thing so just bear with me and we will get this done in no time so I'm just picking my colors I know you can probably hear that in the background um, this design has 11 color changes. So let's just pre press play and watch this placement stitch stitch out. Okay, so I don't know why it didn't stop for me because it was supposed to, but anywho, let's do, let me cut that thread. That's what happens every time I go try to do a video, something never goes right. Okay, so now I'm going to just place 
my fabric down and you want this to be right side up on your sh sheet I'm going to use the bottom as my guide and I'm also using the sides just making sure I have enough to cover alright so I'ma just hold it down for a little, a couple of stitches, just so it doesn't move as it stitches out. Yes, I know it's dangerous, but you gotta do what you gotta do. And so, this will stitch out, and then I will come back once it's done. Let me see if you can see it first. Because I know my machine has a lot of light. But that's what it's looking for, looking like so far. I'll be back when this is done. So here we are coming to the closing of our edge for the patch. We'll just watch this continue to stitch out. And then we're going to start the next color, which is white, I believe. So, let's see what happens. And these little edges, I will clean up once I'm done. So, we'll start this part. And then I will come back when it's done. I, didn't, I don't want this video to be boring, so that's why I'm starting and stopping. But we'll come back when this is done. So we started on the next part. That uh, the little white piece behind there stitched out. And we will come back when this part is finished. Well, it's only a minute, so I guess we can watch it. <laughs> This color, I don't know if it's showing you that it's kind of like a pink, kind of like a mauve pink. And it's a thin line, but it actually gives off enough of what I needed it to do. So. And once this is done, we are going to go to the next color and just watch it start and then once that finish I'll come back and show you what that looks like and I'm hoping that this machine is not making that much noise in your ear where you can watch the video but if it does just fast forward and come back and watch the rest of it thank you <laughs> I'm sorry when you go live or you know try to make a video stuff is playing as you're working so I'm just trying to give you guys a visual of what this is doing and how it works and how this faux leather from the Dollar Tree is holding up. So we'll come back with the next color. So here we are with the next color, which is yellow. And just in case anybody is um, would like to know, the needle that I have in my machine is just a regular standard embroidery needle 7511 the faux leather is not thick enough for me to change the needle to an 8012 but if it was like leather and a little thicker i would have changed my needle to an 80 or all my needles rather because i have several colors in this design i would have had to change all of my needles to an 8012 so here we are and hopefully you guys can see what that's looking like like I said, the machine gives off a lot of light and it's hard to get the real details when the machine is actually working. 
So we'll come back when this one is done. So our design is finished. Let's take it off of the embroidery machine and see what we got. Ooh. Yes, get into it. So now we'll take it to the table and clean it off. So this is what it looks like still in the hoop. I'm gonna just release this out of the hoop. And this is what we have. And remember I use cutaway stabilizers so I'll have to cut this backing away but I want it to clean if I can because most of the time you have to clean it once the design comes off of the backing. But I'll just take my curved scissors and clean as much of it off before I cut the backing off. And I still have to heat seal this. And I don't know if I said this in the beginning of the video or not. And if I did, I apologize because I thought about it after the fact. I thought, I think I said that this patch could be ironed on any garment. But... Being that it is faux leather, I don't suggest you do that. I suggest that you get someone to actually sew this down on whatever garment or bag or whatever you want to use it for. I suggest you get them to sew it down for you. Okay, so I'll just take my regular scissors and cut away this white paper as close to my green stitches as possible without cutting into the stitch. And you need to be close and to the stitch as possible. Like I said, without cutting into the stitch itself but you also want to take your time on this because if you cut into those stitches, then it just starts unraveling. And we don't want that. Ain't nobody got time for that. It took us 32 minutes to make this patch. I would actually say it took me about 35 minutes because I did have to um, change my thread to different colors. But so far, this is what we have. I hope you guys can see the detail, the work. Let me get my fingers out the way. Okay. And so on the back of this is just the paper. So this is what the back looks like. Everything is clean. They have a few standing stitches. And I'm going to clean those off. All you do is just take your scissors and cut that off. But for the most part, this patch is complete. But like I said, I will heat seal this. So what that means is I will take a, um, a lighter and just burn around the edges. And that way it will clean all of this paper off of the, the patch. And if you give me a second, I'll go get a lighter and show you guys exactly what that means. I also could use my, or if you don't have a lighter, if you have a wood burning tool, you can also use that to clean the edges. Just anything that will heat this up to get rid of all the excess. I hope you can see the excess at the bottom and on the sides is white. But I'm going to try to get rid of that. So let me go get my lighter and I'll be right back. So here I am with the lighter. And I'm just going to show you guys a little of this. And I'll complete the rest of it off of camera. 
but uh, again i would just like to thank you guys for watching my channel if this video was helpful to anyone please like comment and subscribe i make videos all the time i'm not going to say once a week because i would be lying but i do upload videos when i get a chance so if that's something that you're interested in please consider liking and subscribing this channel or share it to someone who may like my content and i appreciate that as well um so this is what you do you just lightly take it around i'm gonna show you what it does oh, okay so that's why i say you have to be careful and i was gonna do it off camera because you have to be quick on your hands if the flames you know become too much but you just want to kind of heat seal this and all this is doing is just making sure that none of these stitches around this patch will come loose and you're tidying up the white area so let's see this is a white catch can you see this the white piece right here now watch when i heat it i'm gonna turn it over and you guys can see what happened See how it shrunk that down and made it to the curve of this and you can't let me see you can't up oh, see you can't really see it and all that's burning is the paper and that's okay because I can always cut the back of that off as long as I'm not burning the stitches itself okay so this heat source is almost like when you do ribbon and you have to seal the edge of the ribbon. That's exactly what we're doing here. So you see how clean that is now? And this is the back. So I can cut this little piece off that kind of burned. But that's all you do. And there we have our patch. And I'll go ahead on and finish cleaning this up when I get off camera. But this is what we got. And I'm sorry if I wasn't all the way in the camera. Please forgive me. But... Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to the next video. Bye.